uh, okay see uh, in the last class we were talking about describing irregular waves. What we mentioned is that you could take wave heights and you can plot a histogram which looks like this okay. We also mentioned that you can take instead of height you can take say period and you can plot versus t say some t, t z or so. You can get all statistics about height one third significant height etcetera etcetera probability of how much height occurring where you know uh, what is the chance of a given height to be exceeded etcetera. However, the problem in this is that although we are getting this information of height and period there is no correlation between the two. Remember height is a measure in vertical direction here and period length frequency all are measured in the horizontal coordinate and these two are independent as such because for the same height you can have same frequency can have different heights. But when I want to go to a C we actually require an information of a description where both are coupled. Now how this is done is the interesting concept it is done usually using the concept of energy spectrum. Now we come to this interesting thing see take an irregular signal some irregular signal T versus eta. Now you see I can represent an irregular signal by See what I wrote here, you know everybody has heard of this Fourier analysis. Any irregular signal can be expressed as if it is sum of number of sine frequency and cos frequency or number of cos frequency with the phase angle. This is only a generic may not be exact. The point is that in signal processing you would have seen that any signal which is of this nature you can express them by means of a long series sign series ok. Let us say look at that. Now what, what this represent? This represents here that as if I can conversely get an irregular spectrum I can break it down to this components that is you know different so called versus omega or conversely if I add number of sine waves I end up getting an irregular wave ok whichever way because essentially what is happening here there is a way to get see this is time series time to frequency frequency time. Now the question is like this any signal maybe the signal is also like that you would have seen in your mechanics uh, you know like in, in uh, mathematical physics book any signal I can always break it down to such Fourier analysis. Well that is from signal processing the question is that is it possible for us can we really do that for C wave description the answer is very interesting. What we have seen in uh, linear wave theory is that according to my linear waves my individual waves eta t 1 is basically a cos curve something like that. Now eta 2 t take another wave which is another cos curve now 
Now the point is that we have seen according to linear theory sum of these two waves will simply be given by the sum of the two. Why? Because linear theory allows me to superpose waves. You see if for example this is a solution for the problem phi 1, this is a solution for the problem phi 2, then we find out that basically phi is a linear, the system is linear as well as therefore phi 1 plus phi 2 can be added, superposed. In other words, what happen if I add these two up, what I get becomes actually as per the linear theory the wave which is sum of the two. Okay, so this, this is very important because what it means that it allows me to superpose waves which therefore tells me that supposing I can break it down to this, yes the every one of them individually would represent a typical regular wave. In other words I can think therefore that an irregular wave or this signal is nothing but a sum of regular waves. Or conversely, I can add regular waves together to get irregular wave. Possible because remember regular waves are sine curves and sine curves and also linear. See the two things important. Regular waves are not only sine curves, we have seen it, it is also linear. In other words, I should say other way around. According to linear theory, as per linear theory goes, regular waves are sinusoidal curves. And because it is linear theory, these curves can be added together to get a sum wave. So, superposition is possible. So, you see there is physics involved and mass involved. Mass because any signal can be broken down to this. Well, I can always break it down, but the breaking down would have been meaningless provided this sum is does not really represent a, a realistic physical wave. But we find out that according to my linear wave theory, linear wave theory tells me a sine curve and this can be added together, superposed together. That means I can have plus, if I add it up, I will get a wave, whatever some wave, this is actually also a possible wave. So, I can think now a converse process that I can, I have to begin with this wave, I can think well, I have this. So, I can break it down and I can think that it is nothing but sum of this regular waves. Okay. So, this is the concept behind that. In other words, what is happening now, we will just now go to this picture part, then it will be easier. What is happening, then I can say that I have say in this all sine wave see this omega 1 like that say omega n this when I add it all up I get a irregular wave. So, you see of course, here we have may assume that all the waves are traveling in the same direction you know all of them are same direction and I am adding up. What is happened in reality now that what I find out if I add linear waves I get an irregular signal therefore and, and this irregular signal also satisfies my linear boundary value problem and they represents a realistic wave. Now think opposite I have this wave to start with I have got a signal that way the wave is this. So, what I do I now break it down do a Fourier analysis break it down and find out from as per this equation you know there is both both are possible that I will tell afterwards. Uh, uh, I have this a i and omega i's I can break it down or rather I have this sorry I have this signal I can break it down and determine this a y omega and so called a i omegas so called uh, uh, amplitude of uh, different frequencies and find out individual a i's for different omega i's. See the, this this has got a basically a 1 omega, this is a 2 omega etcetera that is this amplitude, this amplitude. Okay. So, in other words to, I started with that and I can always go back in the opposite direction. So, I have this wave I can say look I have a irregular signal let me find out this signal 
consist of how many sine waves of what type which I can do that. No, absolutely. No, we will come to we will come to those those answers uh, separately uh, later on about regarding various possibilities, right? The question is that I can break it up. Number one is that if you have this signal, the possibilities are not infinite at all. You will find out if I do an FFT, you will end up getting a omega versus omega. Okay. So called if I break it down, like so called time domain to frequency domain, what I will find? See if I let me write it down eta t I can write it actually this way a omega in a in a instead of discrete form I can write in continuous form rather let me put another signal see I can write eta t as integration of a omega cos omega t I, I am writing well let me also write kx see this beta omega let me write it this way d omega okay i can write this way which is nothing but same as sigma of this two are same thing. The question is that given a signal if I break it down I will get always a omega versus a omega fixed I am not going to get different I may be getting a, the, the question only is that if I take n 100, n 200, n 500 I get different number but that is only a question of discretization. This one if I plot the graph if I plot it omega versus a omega I will get some, some value no matter how whether I get this points or the other point I get the same graph. So, it is not non-unique okay. the question the reverse is of course different. Now what happened if I have a signal here I can break it down to this but if I have this a omegas if I add them all up because there is a phase involved this beta i value depending on what beta i, I take I end up getting different kind of signal. This I will come later on this is a phase part see if I sum it all up this depending on where see this phase means where I started from I could start it from 0 here I could start it from slightly here etc I would like this shift I can shift it and add it all up. If I do that I will end up getting different signal. So, there is non-uniqueness non comes from that but if I do have a random signal if I break it down I will get a unique omega versus a omega that is unique that means I can tell this is composed of how many or in what way sine curves of amplitude that is omega versus a omega that is this graph this graph okay now the question is of course now another question is of physics so having said that our 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 answer is like this once again i have this to start with i break it down here fine what do i plot well i can actually plot this a omega versus omega but sometime I can also plot energy of that this side. Now, there is a reason for that. When I do an FFT of a signal, I can actually plot amplitude, this is the amplitude here, or I can plot here so called energy, which is square of amplitude. Why this comes? Now, look at this here. Let us take a area on the ocean surface, some area, the waves there are various types. I mean you know there is a wave picture it is changing you have a stick here measuring it is changing continuously you, you know it goes like that whatever continuously. But the question is like this how did the wave get generated before that let me um, um, tell you this thing uh, this, this aspect the energy average of the wave per unit square area what is this it is half rho g a square okay it's dependent on amplitude square now the second part wind is blowing over this normally these are because of wind generation the wind is blowing over this for a long time the wind is transferring certain energy to the surface now the wind has been blown for such a long time that whatever it could transfer has been transferred which is what we call fully developed sea 
So what happened for a given wind speed whatever energy that could be developed has got developed. Picture re remains different but its energy content you expect from energy con conservation to be constant okay because for a given location see if I have taken a given location and I am measuring the wave height uh, uh, this record from time t0 till say 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour, 4 hour, 5 hour. Now if I take any segment for first 1 hour signal or second 1 hour signal or third 1 hour signal uh, because wind was blowing for a sufficiently long time I would expect the energy content of that signal remains same because no further energy can go in. Yes, maybe after one year different that is a different thing but for over a time span for a given C, uh, signal you would expect energy to be same. So it is therefore logical to actually plot instead of AW plot energy. Now energy means this but actually rho g is a constant. So what we can do we can plot E by rho g but E by rho g if I plot here it is not going to give me a proper see there is omega here. Now I so now here comes again the question supposing I break it down this part to 100 component this one or rather I will show this one better this n is 100. So what happened I get 100 points half a square but if I have 200 I will get 200 points if I add them all up answer is different. So what happened what we do is that remember that last time we say about energy band now I take this frequency band now I say all waves between this to this band that means omega 1 plus minus d omega by 2 energy of all the waves is represented by only one frequency this much that means energy of all the waves between omega i plus minus d omega by 2 this is represented by a i this amplitude. So what is the energy of that it is half a square omega i d omega i no 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 half omega square this thing sorry. So therefore what happened what I want to plot here this side see this this if I call this to be s what I want to plot is that s omega d omega must be equal to half a square in other words see all the waves this let us say this omega i this area should represent energy of all the waves which means this area should represent half a square then how much is this value this is of course this is what we plot this is what is called energy spectrum. So when I plot this that means on the vertical axis when I plot half a omega square by d omega that is very important to have by d omega because if you did not do then if you add it all up if I take 200 then if I add all the a square and if I take 300 then you will find the answer do not match. Remember that total area see the total energy must be constant once again I will give this demonstration here uh, differently see take these two cases you have taken this this one some value say uh, say omega 1 equal to say 1 unit and some next one is 1.2 units next is 1.4 unit like that okay. What it means I have broken it down like that now there can be wave which is as 1.1 also in between now but when I do that what I did I say that all the waves what well, I am saying let me take this one all the waves with the frequency between 1.1 to 1.3 this much energy of all the waves is equal to half of this a square. because I have only one wave I broke it down. Now supposing somebody else had another wave here and another one here. Now if I were plotting only half a square in, in here what is happening remember here all the energy of this wave would have been half a square and this wave will be half a square. In other words in my this graph here what I am plotting here you would have plotted rather other way around. Okay. This, this value with one value 
somebody else would have plotted basically you will just check that two one here and one here it is the same thing see the question is that this if I take rate this this then I would have got the other two or three I would have got this two if I took them one I would have got this one both of them have because the real question is that the energy content of see what is the red line all the waves between this to this frequency have so much energy what is the blue one all the waves between this to this and this to this have this blue energy they must be constant they must remain same so what is happening what I am plotting here is therefore E by rho g uh, E by into 1 by d omega or rather a square half a square by d omega. So that when I integrate or when I take a d omega bandwidth this area represents me the energy of the waves and the, when I integrate over the entire thing this graph tells me the total energy of the wave. See this much would be energy of the wave between this frequency band. Next one is energy of the wave be between the next frequency band. So this overall area would represent the total energy and this energy remains constant for a particular C, for a particular C, for a particular wind speed whatever for everything else remaining constant. So that is the reason why. No, no, not entire that see that depends on what you are see depends on the signal depending on how many you have broken it down see how many I have broken it down then of course I will take this frequency bandwidth then I will plot that part. So what is yeah of course you will get that so you will get uh, piece wise when you add that uh, let me let me uh, show that now in a, in a this different graph form. Uh, so let us put it this way. So what you do here, see here, this omega 1, this omega 2, etc. Now between this to this, this energy part you plot it here. Between this to this you plot it here. So if you do that, you end up getting a graph like that in this axis. Or rather if I were to plot in this axis, you will end up getting a graph which will be looking like that. What you have done? You have plotted all the waves of this here. Next one here etcetera etc. Now the question is that your question is that supposing I put more line inside I will still end up getting the same graph because what happened I will end up breaking it in two parts. So I will end up getting the same graph depend because it is only discrete form see this when I have been omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 what I am saying is that all the waves between this frequency is essentially represented by one wave that means energy of all the waves between this to this is equal to half a square. So what is the energy then half a square for this so this side axis should be half a square by d omega so that this into this that is this area gives me the energy that is the idea. Now you are saying that okay I let me make it smaller you would make it smaller what would happen you automatically end up getting a smaller amplitude at closer frequencies. If I broke, break down a signal if I were to do Fourier analysis if I were to do this see it is very simple if I take n to be 200 I will get smaller value of a over what smaller omegas but if I take n to be say just 5 I will get larger value of a over larger chunks. So I will end up getting the same graph so I will end up getting this graph and this is what is called energy spectrum we call it by s omega and what is the unit of that you, you will see it is meter square second because it is a square by d omega and this is omega. So this is now what is uniqueness of this representation let me again go back to this spectrum supposing I could plot this what I can tell I can tell from the plot immediately that look this signal consists of these frequencies and for each frequency my energy is this much in other words the, this signal this signal is represent is eta t equal to uh, I will tell you this a
right? Because see, this area, because this comes from where? This comes from the fact that half a square omega i is equal to uh, s omega i d omega. That is what we have used. So, what happened when I have this? When I broke it, broke, suppose I took a signal, see now I could represent in this form as I have shown. The in, in, in other words, I have the signal, I broke it down to amplitude against the frequency. So, I will know that this consists of so much amplitude for this frequency. Remember, they are connected now. Amplitude means height. So, I will know this particular wave signal that, it, that this wave signal consists of. 1 100 meter long wave of height 2 meter plus 150 meter long wave of height 3.5 meter plus etcetera, etcetera. Because, well, when I say 100 meter long wave, what I am saying? 1 wave of frequency omega 1. Remember, length, frequency, k are connected. So, I am saying 100 meter long wave means 1 wave of frequency omega 1 of height a 1, 3 meter plus another wave of frequency omega 2 of height so much meter. I know that. So, this signal therefore, I am able to break down where I can correlate the length with the height. It means it consists of so much waves of so much length of so much height. Length means period means frequency. So, you see I could get frequency this side against you can say measure of height this side for the same signal. So, it is correlating my both things. In earlier what happened, I only said I have so many heights occurring so many times etcetera, etcetera. But here, this signals I can now break it down to say how many frequencies exist of how what height or what is the combination. That means, this irregular spectrum consists of what regular waves. Remember one thing, if I say there is a wave of omega 1 of frequency a 1 like of amplitude a 1. Let us say this is omega 1 means 100 meter long wave of amplitude a 1 means say 5 meter. What I am saying effectively is that I have in this signal one component of 100 meter long wave of height 5 meter or 5 1 meter waves because 5 1 meter waves also gives me 5 meter wave for the same length. So, here we are doing that. See remember why I am saying this 5 1 meter wave because in earlier what happened let us say in a signal I broke it down 5 meter occurred once, twice, three times etcetera. So, I say 5 meter occurred four times, 3 meter occurred one time etcetera. But here the time part is not taken. If 5 meter occurred four times then all get embedded as one number, lump number. Okay. So, this is what is the concept behind C spectrum. This of course, any signal can be as I mentioned before uh, at the very beginning can be Fourier analyzed and you can always plot this a i square. If you go to any computer program say MATLAB or anywhere you know there is an FFT subroutine. You feed a signal there will be output file how do you want to do FFT results? Do you want a w a you know amplitude with omega or energy with omega? It is called energy spectrum. You can always find that energy. So, energy spectrum of any signal is very common in any electrical engineering or any engineering because it is known as energy is always in proportion to square of amplitude. So, you are plotting square of omega. The question is that in our case the second question is well I know that I have an irregular signal, but can I break it down to sine waves? Does it make any physical sense? Can I say that uh, you know re regular waves can be added? It so beautifully happens that because linear wave theory gives me sine waves I could add the linear waves. It is something like I have a black box maybe I should use the black color for that black box here. I something like I add wave number 1, wave number 2, wave number 3 etcetera, churn it out, out comes this irregular waves. Converse, I have the irregular waves there, I have the mechanism, I just shake it, separates out all the regular waves. So, you see the idea of irregular wave therefore, is obtained by simply summing regular waves and conversely, I can sum regular waves in randomly to get irregular waves. Now, the question is see this black boxing I want to tell you once more. Suppose, I have this black box okay, once again I, I put it this way. This is my black box which is a linear system and linear system I told you that if I have an input 1 gives me an output 1, input 2 
gives me output 2, then input 1 plus 2 will give me output 1 plus 2. That is the definition of linear system. Now, my waves are linear. So, I am putting wave number 1, which is a linear one of omega 1, some this one, I put it back, then another one I put it here. Okay, I, I keep putting this inside these blocks. I do not know when I put it, I maybe the time let us say is the you know start the time I put is the start time. So, I put it now, next one after 2 seconds, next one maybe after 1 and a half second, randomly I keep putting. So, the my addition is random, the some point, but energy remains same, remember energy will remain same because energy has nothing to do with the time at which you are putting, you are putting this wave having some energy. He puts this wave after maybe, well he comes strolling in 2 minutes later and puts it, but his energy is same. So, when you add it all up, my energy remains same, but the signal that I get up when I churn like this, but I shake it differently after a while I will get another signal. The point is that whether I get this or this signal, if I break it down I will get this components, same components. So, you see the, the point remains therefore, that in a space if I have not fully developed C, wind is blowing for a while, my instantaneous signal completely differs, but if I break it down then I would expect that they will you know like filter out to same frequency components because that is what is logical you know that you would expect that at least for the same place. In other words I took a 10 hour signal of the same place whether you take a 1 hour chunk, 5, 5th hour to 6th hour or 1st hour to 2nd hour you would expect it to be same, but the signal will not repeat it is random. You can check that if I were to use this signal and uh, you know in a computer program and if I generate beta i to be random, you just use beta i to be random and use same values of ai and omega i's, you will see that your signal will not repeat itself because there is a random phase uh, involved here, it will keep on, but it will have a same statistical property. If I filter it down and plot an energy spectrum, I will end up getting the same energy spectrum and that makes sense because we are thinking that in a given location with a bathymetry and all that for a given wind speed only a given kind of energy can get transferred and given type of waves will get excited. For example, if in a location with some bottom you know say, say so there is a location here the C bottom is going like that, there is a C, you would expect that it will always produce more number of 100 meter long waves and much less number of 200 meter long waves whether it is today, tomorrow, day after if the wind was 30 knots because nobody knows it yet, but at least you think it will depend on the bathymetry. So, this is the reason, this is the logic of uh, introducing this wave spectrum. So, this idea is really, really, really interesting, this spectrum idea and you end up getting this shape which is nothing but representing the irregular waves in a frequency domain. Once again, I may always say now one further sum that I have a something like uh, if I were to plot again this many times we are plotting it. So, well this you think this sine waves, this sum, sum, sum gives me which I am representing at as this way. So, the here are my omegas. So, this is my time. What I did? Eta versus time is represented in terms of S omega versus omega. This is what is called you may say time domain signal represented in a frequency domain that is all. A time domain signal represents frequency domain and it is permissible for us because this process is permissible as per linear wave theory. If the wave was not linear, suppose you use trochoidal wave okay, in your um, uh, well in, in ship strength, you cannot add two trochoids cannot be added. If you are done marine hydrodynamics, suppose you stock second order wave looking like that, you cannot add them, you cannot add this to get a, get a wave. Remember these are not additive because supposing I take a second order profile looking sign, non sign, another second order profile, if I add them the profile I get is not a feasible wave because that does not satisfy my boundary value problem <laughs> whose solution should be a wave. But if I take a 2 sign or 3 sign or 5 sign, the resulting wave also satisfies the same linear boundary value problem. So, it is theoretically a feasible wave. This is something that has to be understood. So, this, you, this thing is possible 
only for a linear wave system. If I had a very rough, uh, you know, very steep wave, I cannot add two steep waves, period. So, linearity of wave uh, theory really allowed me this and that is very, I mean, I am repeatedly stressing that to you, okay. So, having said that now, let us, let us go, go back to some other interesting uh, parts of this property of that. Number one, see, if I see the spectrum, suppose I take a signal, I, I, I again, I, it will look something like that, typically. Now, you see omega is reverse of t and that means this is, you can say, well, no, this, this side, this side omega, this side t, that means this side is also lambda, you know, in proportion, because remember, higher frequency means lower period, means lower wavelength. So, in a sense, it is like that. Most of the signals that has been analyzed turns out when people do that is having a shape like that. Once again, it is a non-Gaussian, but Rayleigh shape, same as what we discussed earlier. Obviously, what people have done, oceanographers, they went around the oceans for ages, for 100 years, they are oceanographic ships, people have kept on measuring these signals and analyze that. So, you would have done it, uh, you know, you will end up finding some spectrum which will probably look something like that, energy, it will. Mostly people, obviously it will not be a nice smooth curve. Mostly people found out that it follows this spectrum, uh, this shape. There is a reason for that again, you see what is it, not uniformly distributed. You have got more number of smaller waves, less number of broader waves, which is true, which is how it happened. Not only that, people will find out that there are for a given, for a given energy, normally there is no waves beyond some long wave and no way beyond this thing, practically no way. There will be maximum number of waves or most dominant waves at some length, okay. This is what has been always found out from observation and that makes sense. Example, take a location, wind is blowing at 20 knots, you will find out that there are, well, let us put numbers here. This is say 500 meter long wave, this is say 50 meter long wave. The 500 and long is going to be approximately 20 second or so maybe, 20 second, this may be 6 second approximately. Remember we need to have this feel of these numbers which you will see from spectrum eventually. So what happened? You will find out that if 20 knot wind was blowing, practically no wave, uh, waves, if I break it down the signal longer than 500 meter or shorter than 50 meter, most of the waves are within that of which maximum wave might have occurred at this length which might be equal to say 200 meter. Now take another location, same wind, maybe its shape is different, same location, more wind, maybe it will be different. But point remains is that in a given location, given bathymetry, given wind speed, the kind of energy transfer will, that will excite waves, you expect them to be having a similar bandwidth, a similar nature, okay. So, oceanographic people, they would have actually gone around and they would have found out this and they found out that your shape of that for a given location remains more or less similar and that is very rational, very logical. Let us look at some property of this wave. When I have this signal this way, I can immediately find out several things. I can find out that there are no waves shorter than this length. There are no waves practically longer than this. The maximum wave occur here. And I can also find out statistically what is the total energy content. What is it? It is an area under that. So you see now, let me define this thing M n, nth moment as omega n this this represent nth moment okay what is 0th moment what is m0 m0 is the area under that so m0 therefore becomes a measure of wave height square because it's an area under that see area under that is of course in proportional to in some sense height square, 
So area, remember I can have this, I can shift, but now the, the interesting question, I take another spectrum, just shifted it, just parallelly shifted it, area remains same. So, a, so M0 will remain same both cases. So, of course, that makes sense the you know the height, height part is not connected to the length part, but what does this show? See this would be showing that there are more number of shorter waves. In other words, if the this the black one was looking, I will just show one signal like that. The red one is supposed to be similar height say, but like that shorter right because it is a number of shorter waves there. Now I need to know that also how do I know that that is given by the centroid of this which is basically moment of this graph about this point. So if I take M1 what is M1? M1 tells me the centroid of this graph that is this distance. M2 will be second moment of inertia. So M1, M2 etc. would represent the characteristic of the time signal time period of the waves whereas M0 gives me characteristic of the height of the waves. In fact, we will uh, uh, go to this. In fact, now interesting point comes. Statisticians have found out that this signal, this shape as I said follows a Rayleigh distribution, a particular theoretical distribution. One moment you know and moment I can fit it a theoretical distribution, it turns out I can just like wave, I can express this in terms of some parameter m0. I can, I can actually write this graph s omega as a function of a parameter. It also turns out that all these values like RMS value of the signal, that RMS value of this uh, uh, wave height. Uh, uh, this is given by root over of m0, then amplitude one third, this amplitude one third which is half of wave it is given by 2 root m0, then well of course h one third will be therefore 4 root m0, then also h 1 n will be k, what I am trying to say is something like that you know that if you were to take this shape to follow a Rayleigh distribution, theoretically an expression, in that case all parameters of importance becomes known in terms of either area or h one third and you can express relationship between the two. For example, the RMS value of the signal becomes square root of that, in other words RMS value of height would become 2 m0 if I take the other way around H RMS because remember H is always twice that. If I take one third value of the wave height, remember why this 4 comes because I plotted A square whereas H is twice A, remember. Uh, the, it will be, it is dimensionally the same because of course it is dimensionally the same because this side is meter square second, this is 1 by second. What is m0? Is meter square, square root of m0 is meter. No, no, rho g we have taken it out. See that this is the interesting part. No, we said energy, actually it is not energy, it is energy by rho g. So we took energy out by taking rho g. So it does, uh, you know, like what I said here is it is proportional to energy essentially. Why bother with a constant rho g? So that is why people take out rho g. Okay. So then it makes sense, right. So you see wh why what I mean by k is that, well I do not know the value of k, but for any 1 by n theoretically you know like 1 by 10 k may be 5.53, 1 by 100 k may be something else etc. It is all known. Now similarly mean central period T1. Okay. Mean central period means basically the mean period, it is 2 pi, I will tell you this makes perfect sense m0 by m1. 
see m0 by m1, m1 by m0 should be omega, see what is this, see if I take m1 by m0, what do I get, I, I get the Cg of that, this distance is centroid of that, no first moment about that divided by the area, you can think in it is a centroid of this graph from this side, that is equal to my omega 1, T1 therefore 2 pi by omega 1, so 2 pi into m0 by m1 that is what is called mean period, the mean central period. Similarly, one can find out that you can also get things like mean 0 crossing period to 0, in fact all of them are possible. this is given by theoretically 2 pi there is a square root comes because we have an m2 coming here second part now all this not only this relations actually every possible relations with respect to statistical quantities becomes known once i assume this shape to follow a particular statistical formula which goes like this, we have done number of measurements, oceanographers have done, analyzed it and by doing that it is found out that they closely follow a shape like that which can be fitted with a given formula, a Rayleigh distribution formula, okay. Having said that now you say okay I will fit a Rayleigh formula, moment you fit a Rayleigh formula, the formula is expressible in terms of M0, M0 is expressible in terms of h one third or h average or h rms so you can also write the formula in terms of h one third also of course in terms of t in order to know the position of that that is m2 or so having said that once i have that formula in place say i have an h one third and t uh, one given then i can figure out all other statistical quantities of importance from that formula for example if i want to find out what is the chance that my wave height is going to be more than so and so, I can find it out. What are the number of times in 24 hours a particular wave height will occur, I can find out. What is the mean period, I can find out. All quantities of statistical importance can be found out theoretically from the shape, which we will not discuss here because that is a part of wave statistics and you know like irregular wave theories, but it is possible to find out all. An example is this, see a Rayleigh distribution is given by f x given by x by m0 area under that exponential minus x square by 2 m0. See here, this is the graph that, that means this shape, this is f x, this is x, area is m0. So you see this with respect to m0, this might this is formula for a Rayleigh distribution. Okay, Rayleigh distribution formula is like that. Function of x x in terms of m0, unknown is m0, right? Now, if I therefore know m0, if I knew the area, I can I know the shape. Conversely, I got the shape, I found the m0 and I fit this form, formula. So, I will end up getting this shape. See, I what happened? I took this signal, I broke it down, I found out the uh, totally you know like this signal, I found m0, then I fit this graph, I end up getting this smooth curve. If I get this smooth curve, for example, I can find out things like see the probability of say xi a more than a, this will turn out to be integration of 0 to infinity a to infinity sorry f x d x and if you work it out it will turn out to be 1 by m 0 a to infinity x exponential minus x square by 2 m 0 into d x. You can work it out one can uh, get this, well actually this will turn out to be if I work it out exponential minus C 
Similarly, for example, I give an example number of times a particular value a this becomes This also can be worked out. What I am trying to say is, see, instead of thinking a probability of a particular threshold, suppose you want to tell, find out how many number of times in an hour a particular value A will be exceeded. For example, you want to find out in one hour how many times my wave height will be more than 5 meter, 2 times, 3 times, how many times? You can find it out because it is this probability multiplied by number of oscillations per hour. So the question that I am saying or uh, uh, the point I am making here is that every quantity of statistical importance can be determined once I presume the graph follows a Rayleigh distribution and the Rayleigh distribution becomes knowable provided I know area under that m0 or h one third or one parameter. Okay. So what therefore means is that see it is very interesting if from this point of view. I have a signal. I went to ocean and I measured a signal. I broke it down and I got a graph. I found out my M0 area under the graph or how, you know total energy content. Now I assume that well with that energy content my graph will be Rayleigh distribution. So I put the Rayleigh distribution back. Then from there I can find out all the property I want. This is a uniqueness of spectral representation. See, if I were to use with a actual observed data, probably I could not get all this part. But if I in fact went to an observation and fitted that to a Rayleigh distribution, I will end up getting this. And interesting part is that uh, it is we will be saying that suppose I uh, take a sig long signal, I found out all these h's, okay. then I analyze in one hand what is how many times what h occurred etc i found out h one third one kept it aside then i took the same signal did fft fitted a signal and found out the found, fitted a uh, graph found out the spectrum again did area under that did 4 root m0 i'll see that that will be same as this they are all theoretically consistent it's only stating the same thing from other way down. In other words, if I have this signal, if I had uh, uh, broken it down, it, it, it has certain uh, web statistics, same statistics is obtained by fitting it to a Rayleigh spectrum with of course the input parameter given by H one third. Okay. So this is what is happening. Now uh, we will end it today, this description part, what happens uh, is that obviously for my description of open ocean, remember that I have to design a ship that has to go to ship tomorrow, not yesterday. I knew yesterday's data I analyzed to a spectrum, but I need to design a ship that goes tomorrow. So I have to have a means of predicting or describing ocean for tomorrow. You understand what I am saying? Because what I am designing must be in an environment that is not occurred yet. So I have to have some formula that will describe my open ocean. So these are given by certain closed form formulas which call theoretical web spectrum which we will discuss in next class. That is what spectrum I should use to find out how my ship would behave when it is going from Calcutta to Port Blair for next 20 years. Okay, with that I will end here uh, you know and we will tomorrow we will discuss about what is called theoretical web spectrum.